What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I'm going to be going over some new arrivals and uh, a little bit later we're going to be going over uh, some of the stuff that's coming soon on Blade HQ. Uh, if you're wondering why would I need to watch a video on this, I could just do this myself. You're right, you absolutely can. In fact, I will link this page exactly right down at the top of the description to make it super easy on you guys who want to do that. If you'd like to stick around and listen to my commentary and look at these things at the same time, then of course, feel free to stick around. Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. Uh, there's a link down below for Patreon and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Okay, there's a lot of new stuff. Um, what is this? QSP Penguin and Brown Micarta? Okay, okay, I don't think that's super new. Flytanium Custom Shred Carbon Fiber Lotus Scales for Spider Coat. So these new Lotus scales that we're seeing for uh, different, like various popular models. I have some titanium Lotus scales on my bug out, which you're hearing me flip, which is of no advantage to you. <laughs> um, they're great. The machining on them is a step up. Uh, I'm not saying like overall quality of titanium has always been good, but there's more like 3D-ness going on. There's more work going on. There's more, I don't know, there's just more detail, right? The price on this stuff is not bad. 84 bucks for shred carbon fiber, especially the way that Flytanium does it, right? Uh, yeah, I've been buying Flytanium products for a long time. I have never had an issue with them. They've always been great. And uh, it's nice to see them, you know, able to put out lots of stuff. I remember when it was like Flytanium makes something, get it quick because it's once it's gone, it's like really hard to get, right? We're seeing crossfade G10 scales, different colors for the bug out. These crossfade scales are really nice. Uh, all of your different, you know, G10s and micartas and stuff like that. And it is not limited to what you're seeing here. If you were to search Flytanium uh, or use my link for the Flytanium website, which the pricing is also great there. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. And look at the prices on this. $39 for G10 scale. Yeah, that's, they're, they're worth it, 100%. Um, the James brand. Uh, <laughs> gosh, if that knife was, if the James brand, uh, uh, the Barnes, I always stumble around that because they insist on saying like the, the name of it, James brand, the Barnes. It's not only pretentious, it's confusing. Um, there's a limited edition one, right? So uh, this is a 400 to $450 knife masquerading as a $650 knife. I've been over this a million times. The knife is very nice. It's built by Riot. Uh, but it ain't no $650 knife. But it's there if you guys want it. I mean, as per usual, you can just, you know, tell me and you say, kick rocks complex. I'm going to buy what I want. And that's fine. Cause I, I, you know, tell people they should definitely do that. Uh, pro tech operator series of the TR three. That's pretty cool. That has the tritium insert on the button, um, which we can probably zoom in on. Yeah. Can we get a little closer? A little bit. Okay. It's kind of neat, right? It glows all the time. You don't need to charge it with light. It literally just glows all the time. Um, which is neat. I, I think that's neat. They've also got, how many times did I say neat? It's neat guys. Do you guys know it's neat? Neat. Okay. The Protec TR5 operator. That's also a really cool one. This is, despite what you might think, not larger. <laughs> I always thought the five would be larger than the four or the 4.1. This is actually the more reasonably EDC sized uh, version of this knife. 7.625 inches overall. Uh, CPM has 35VN. Yeah, it's expensive, but there's a lot more going on with this version of it. And the Operator Series knives are, I mean, ProTech always does limited stuff, right? But these are like kind of, these are really popular. Like they're blackout, you know, Operator Series knives. And it's kind of neat that you get Tritium. The Godfather, this is one of the coolest knives uh, in their, um, you know, in, in their line. Um, they're still doing 154 CM on this, which is okay. Uh, I think maybe it would be nice to see, you know, their less expensive models, uh, you know, they, they keep those at 154 and then maybe they move to S35 or preferably S45. Protex still does an amazing job. The thing I want people to remember is, is that they are still, uh, making the very best side opening automatic knives in the world. And it's pretty cool because they are making them in the United States. So very proud uh, to be a supporter of ProTech. That Paragon Warlock in titanium is real tempting. <laughs> Had they done a different steel for... Set 
S35 Vian's great, but I'm not. That's not what I want for seven hundred and seventy dollars. But you know, considering the way it operates, the titanium construction, uh, I I would have been tempted. You know, I'll admit. Whole bunch of goofy stuff here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh boy. You know what? Let's look at this. Let's 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 search for a purpose here. <laughs> Okay, well, the first, you know, thing that uh, the, 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 the big red flag, despite this knife being, you know, it actually has nothing to do with a knife being red. Uh, a cheap knife that is a dagger immediately is a red flag, right? Uh, number two, the whole multi-tool aspect, red flag. Uh, number three, blade material, what is it? Stainless steel. <laughs> Oh boy, that's fun, right? Hey, for thirty-four bucks, knock yourself out, man. You do, you do you. <laughs> that's bizarre. Okay, what do we got here? Um, Surefire Stiletto Pro Multi Output LED Flashlight in Black. A uh, thousand lumens for two hundred six or six hundred fifty lumens for one sixteen. All right. Um, QSPs, guys. These uh these. Knives that are ranging from 50 to 70 bucks from QSP are very much worth checking out. Um, look at this. You guys see it? 14C28N for $54.98. I've got two newer QSPs over here. Uh, that's the QSP Penguin and Titanium and the QSP um, Pelican in S35VN. And the quality is unreal. QSP is knocking it out of the park and nobody's paying attention. I'm not going to say nobody's paying attention, but these guys are, a lot of their knives are on par or in some cases better for the money than some Civivi knives that I've handled. And they've been king of the budget world for a while. The QSP Hawk is 7.375 inches overall with a 3.25 inch blade. Looks like a nice profile. I've never actually handled this. Sandvik 14C28N, which if you guys have never read Laren Thomas's article on the greatest budget knife steel of all time, spoiler alert, it's 14C28N. And yes, you, you should take him seriously because he's an actual metallurgist and there's an enormous amount of scientific data that he puts into the article. It's really compelling, actually. Uh, but uh, 5498, holy crap. Uh, really like to see QSP continue to push 14C28N. I think that's a good idea. Still looking for this, guys. I still want to review this so bad. The Red Horse Hellraiser. Um, I I remember seeing the original custom version of this however many years ago. And I mean years ago, right? It's neat that they do a production version. I really want to review it. So if you've got one. Oh, by the way, uh, if you want two mini custom prototype Halo 3s, they're only $10,725. So... You know, all right, uh, one's Damascus and one is M390. Um, if you're wondering who would ever spend 10000 you know, at some point, these are going to be collectible, right? So as is the case with most obscure custom uh, one-off Marfions, they will probably appreciate in value. The problem is getting somebody to spend $10,000 on, you know, two knives that are, you know, I, I, I guess, close to the size of martini swords, right? Um, there's the titanium QSP penguin. I have this. It's very good. 9688 for titanium and 154 cm. Yes. My answer here is yes. Any question that you have, the answer is yes. Not any question, right? This is worth it. It it does work despite having a narrow frame. You can see that they gave you ample room to place your fingers so that you're staying off of the lock bar. This works really well as a more premium knife. Um, it honestly feels like more, more than 9688, right? 154 CM is, in my opinion, the greatest all-around EDC steel, even though I'm sure it's going to be phased out by some of this new super stuff, right? Um, but I do very much enjoy 154 CM. And yeah, this is worth it. I mean, again, it's I mean, it's just shy of a hundred bucks and you're getting titanium. Legendary design with the penguin. It's really good. And you don't have to just, oh, fine, complex, but it's monochromatic. I don't want you have the option of 
the black washed, you've got blue, I think they do a darker titanium, a lighter titanium, they do tumbled blades, they do satin blades, they do black washed blades, right? There's a bunch of different stuff that you can you can choose from. So I think there, this is the one that I have right here. This is a good, let me just, let me sell you on mine here real quick. Is this satin or is it, no, this is stone washed. This is the exact one that I have. I think this is sharp looking. Oh, <laughs> knife puns. I think this is sharp looking. Uh, so check this out for sure. And if you don't want titanium, well, then they've still got copper and all that stuff. Uh, there are smooth titanium scales for <laughs> for the skinnies still here. Um, yeah, so if you are looking for a battle bronze or a uh, battle blue titanium scale for your skinny XM18 3.5 inch, those are at Blade HQ, uh, surprisingly. I, I'm, I'm shocked. Those those have to just be sitting there because people don't know that they're there. Still looking to, to check this out. Um, the SOG Pentagon OTF, just because it's a good-looking... I think it's a good-looking OTF. S35VN. Uh, where are these made? Are these U.S. made or are they made in Taiwan? I don't know. I'd appreciate uh, if somebody could clarify down in the uh, down in the um, comments. I know that they have a couple of models that are made in the. In fact, they've got quite a few models that are made in the United States, if I'm not mistaken. Um, this is, you know, we're looking at um, Microtech Direct Delta competition zone in terms of size uh, and materials. Direct Delta still got it beat. It, technically, if you want to go cost of materials or value of materials, they're using 20 CV over S35VN, but okay, that's kind of a nitpicky thing. Circumstantially, either steel could be better than the other, right? Um, yeah, True Dagger, pretty neat. Uh, if you own this knife and you would lend it to me for review, I'd really like to look at it. I'd like to know how SOG's OTF game is currently. Um, Blade HQ is really pushing the Vox Dapper. Which makes me, ugh, it makes me want that. I don't know how I feel about that. That that word makes me want to drink a Dijon mustard. Uh, dapper. I don't know if it's being used ironically or unironically or intentionally. I don't know. Um, but the knife is is kind of weird looking. Let's look at this one. This is a nice looking version of this. What do we have? Oh, it is M three ninety. All right um flipper flipper only wire clip size is 6.125 inches 2.375 inches great for people who live in an area with a three inch blade law um interesting uh you know how they do the edge there i'm sorry how they do the blade i mean the, the edge is sort of there's a lot of belly i guess is what i'm saying all right it's there the giant mouse vox onzo ace uh, i'm sorry jock Giant Mouse Vox Anzo Riv is a great small EDC knife. Thank you to the person who sent that in. All right, where are we at here? Are we getting, holy, m oh, we have to look at this. We have to look at this. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, man. So I think this is one of the stainless steel handled OTFs. So the Hera is about the size of the Troodon, not the Combat Troodon, the Troodon. It just fires a little smoother and a little harder. This is a full custom version of it with the stainless steel. Weird, right? They use stainless steel in, instead of titanium? No idea why. I have no idea what the advantage is of that. But, excuse me, what I want to do is look at this blade. Oh, man, that is wicked. Uh, wicked cool. I want to see this exact same configuration, but in a Scarab 2. I'm talking about a, uh, probably a $5,500 to $6,000 OTF there. This one coming in at the low, low price of $4,719 or $4,719. It's there. Marfion Collectors, it's there. Along with a uh, Truidon Mini, uh, another custom Hera with snakeskin copper carbon fiber, right? All of all of that is totally out of my uh, out of my price range. Uh, the Civivi Ferrum Forge Stylum slip joint. Okay, I didn't know that was a slip joint, but there you go. It's there for sixty bucks. The Wee Lundquist Eidolon. Uh, I hope that I I think I have some one of those coming in. What is this? <laughs> Are these tactical tweezers? <laughs> 
Oh man, Bob Terzola, uh, Terzola designed these. No way. This innovative tweezers tool was designed by Bob Terzuola. I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. They are convenient and compact for easy carrying. The tweezers are made of black stone more steel. The handle is black and brass stone more steel. To open and lock this tool in place, simply twist the sliding screw and push the tweezers up and the screw uh, and screw it back in place. It has a keychain holder attached to your keys. You never know uh, when you'll have to pull out a sliver. All right, um, I get if you work construction, this might be an interesting or convenient thing to keep in your vehicle, right? I remember constantly, constantly having splinters when I was working for my dad. Uh, so yeah, there you go. And you know what? 2650, knock yourself out, right? They're locking too. So you can really grab, you know, if you have a whole tree branch stuck in your arm, <laughs> you can lock it out. This is the handsomest, is it handsomest or most handsome version of the uh, Lundquist Eidolon? That's nice, clean looking. CPM 20 CV and uh, meh, Gray G10. Eh, 195. Mm, come on, we. That's a little bit much there. Maybe if it was titanium. Still interesting though. Nice looking knife. Um, not a true dagger. I believe that's a false edge on one side. This is probably the most interesting thing that I've seen we put out for a bit. Uh, this is the Esperit. Is this... Why do I think that this is Laconico? Yeah, it is. I was going to say. That looks like a Laconico. <laughs> it looks like a Laconico. Esperit. Um, there you go. You can read that if you want to. CPM 20 CV Titanium. Uh, and it is a front flipper. Uh, look at this. Nice pocket clip. Um, yeah, this is a good looking knife. Um, I, uh, I, I requested, uh, you know, I, I talked with Wee and they said, is there anything you want to look at? And I said, yeah, that new uh, Laconico uh, frame lock that you guys have. Smaller than you guys might think. Seven and a half inches overall. It'll probably be just fine. Um, I kind of wish that it was about eight inches. But that's because I have a preference for larger knives. A lot of people, I think, are really going to like the size on this one. Um, but yeah, I think that's one of the better looking um, knives that we has done in a while. Moving on here, some odd uh, Bestex. Uh, I like Bestex work, but they're, they're... This is probably a collaboration with another designer. Uh, so like for for example, you know when when Best Tech works with major um, designers, they it always the quality ends up great. But I see a lot of stuff like this. Some people like this. This is too wild and busy for me. Like not in, in a way that's not super duper interesting. Um, but that's a preference thing, right? So your thoughts may vary. I think we might be getting to a point with new releases where I'm not actually seeing anything that is massively new. Um, <laughs> concept, don't do this. Uh, like, don't put the American flag on stuff that's not made in the United States. That's that's like really. I'm not. I'm not like. I'm offended, but like that's cheesy. Like, don't don't do that. <laughs> Come on. I like concept knives. I, I think they make great knives for the money. They're not made here and that's fine. I'm going to point out that, you know, uh, they make good quality knives. There are definitely, you know, brands from China that make crap knives and concept is not one of those brands. They make good ones. Don't put the American flag on a Chinese made knife. Don't do that. Um, let's see. Uh, Lion Steel Best Man. L guys, this, this is an incredible slip joint. I, I have this knife here. I have this knife, uh, not this exact one, but I have actually three different line steel best mans. These are wonderful. The half stop or mid stop is so solid and snappy. Fit and finish is great. This is M390 and Jade for 119. Yeah, yeah. Uh, go for this, guys. This is a fantastic. If if you want to EDC it, great. You want it as a backup knife, great. Right? You just like slip joints, great. Three under three inches, really good, really really good. I'm spoiler alert. When I review the best man, I'm gonna give it a very very positive review. Um, oh, there's some s. There's an SBR in here. 
Um, that's neat. Those are kind of hard to get a hold of. Blacked out S35VN SBR. Very cool. Uh, McNeese Mach, uh, PM Mach 2. That's the new American, you know, uh, that's that's like the, the new big like American. I'm not going to say he's new. That's the, uh, I believe McNeese is the same person behind the McB from Spyderco, which I loved. This knife. I didn't love quite as much, but I think it's because it's smaller. Um, the uh, The overall quality was pretty good, um, and it's awesome that it's made in the United States. I really want to see a different pocket clip. I want to see a more, you know, sort of 3D milled, something that doesn't look like kind of an afterthought. Uh, the pocket clip is just too plain, uh, too stamped out for something that's, in this case, $518. I'd like to see a steel lock bar insert, too. Um, partially just, you know, for the, the maintenance if something goes wrong with the lock geometry, but also because there needs to be a dedicated over travel stop for, for this knife. And there isn't the only thing that's putting up resistance, uh, for that, um, lock bar is the pocket clip. Uh, I'm not going to say it's a likely circumstance that you're going to overextend the lock bar, but if you do, it will ruin the, the lockup, right? Uh, so I think that will go a long ways. The quality's there, right? I mean, like the overall quality of this thing is there. Like he's 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 got that figured out, um, and I really want that to be a great knife because it looks good, and I'm a big supporter of you know U.S. manufacturing. I want to see a bigger version of that, and I want to see those little quality of life improvements on there. That'd be really cool. Uh, what else do we have here that looks interesting? Um, are we getting back to? The area, yeah, we are, because I remember these funky wizard daggers. <laughs> hey, listen, if you want to be a wizard, that's fine. It's going to cost you $1,000 for these bad wizard boys, okay? It's just factual. It's just what's going to happen. Thanks, Paragon. Um, let's go into coming soon. This is a long one, I know, but I, I don't want to do two dedicated videos to new arrivals and coming soon. I just don't want to do that, right? Um, okay, TRM Neutrons, I think, I don't know if that's actually coming, Microtech SOCOM Elites, right, we've been talking about how those are coming for a long time, the Demco 8020.5, if you guys don't know, DLT just dropped a bunch of them, and they sold very quickly, this was just a couple of days ago, that means that many, many retailers are likely going to get orders. So when Blade HQ says the Demco 8020.5 is coming soon, they probably mean it's coming really soon. I know that the email me button doesn't always work, but you should, I mean, that's going to be your best bet unless you want to sit there and reload the Blade HQ website and probably multiple others all day. And nobody has time for that. At least I don't, right? So um, yeah, be paying attention um, if you're wanting to pick that up. Right. If you don't want to pick it up, then you don't. Then don't. Then don't do anything. <laughs> but if you're like many people uh, and you're wanting to pick that up, then there you go. Um, the We Sakshi uh, that definitely looks interesting. That's a handsome design. Honestly, it looks like a uh, what I call a Sawiwi. Uh, basically, looks like a as you might be able to guess uh, a Savivi and a We mixed together. These Benchmade 945s in um, the Flytanium, that are, they come pre-installed with the Flytanium um, and Micarta, which is really cool. So you can get, you know, your flavor. You want your natural G10. You want your copper, your brass, your titanium, right? Uh, OD green Micarta, black Micarta, gray G10. Look at all these. There's a ton of them. These are cool. Um, and, uh, I trust whoever's assembling these probably knows what they're doing. And also Flytanium, like I said, really great quality. So I don't think the price is bad on those considering, you know, what you're getting. It's a U.S. made Benchmade knife with custom scales on it. Um, so yeah, there you go. Uh, if you're looking for a mini 940, uh, with some flair, then, uh, you can pick one of those up. GSOs, I didn't know that they were still around. Um, so there you go. There's some GSOs, some 4.5 GSO uh, knives coming. Uh, the Baby Banter, I know that that's been talked about quite a bit. So that's coming soon. Um, let's take a look at that guy. How about this purple boy here? 
Uh, Nitro V, 5950, the Civivi Baby Banter in Nitro V. Um, I think that's pretty cool. I think that's a pretty good price on that boy there. Um, eh, pocket Clip is kind of, that Pocket Clip is a little bit too long. Uh, that is a 5.46 inch knife with a 2.34 inch blade. It really is a little baby. It's just a little baby, All right? Pocket clip looks a little bit long for that little baby, but everything else looks pretty interesting. So there you go. There's a few of them there. Uh, 59 bucks won't break the bank if you want a little, what is going on here? A little teeny tiny office carry knife or what, for whatever reason, right? I mean, maybe you're going to go try and survive in the jungle and you just like small knives. It's fine. It's your business. Um, okay. Is there anything else here that's really interesting? Um, I don't think so. We're getting into these spider codes again. Guys, um, that's going to be, I think, pretty much it. Uh, I will uh, link a few of these things that I highlighted individually down in the description. Not everything we talked about will be, will be linked down there, but you can absolutely go and look at this page. The page will probably look a little bit different when you guys click on it. You guys are watching this now on a Saturday morning or afternoon as far as the time it uploaded, but I'm recording it on a Thursday. So there might have been a couple of things that I missed that came out in between now and then. Uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, of course, uh, leave a like if you'd like to check out my other content. I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.